So now I want to hand over to one of the two speakers. I'll give you a quick introduction to you both and then Lou will take us away. So to start with, we have Kevin Morosky, an advertising creative, film director, influence, influencers, influencer. He's worked with brands such as Vodafone, Adidas and Audi. And he's also the co-founder of POCC, a community created by people of colour to help people of colour for the benefit of all. We also have Lou Bones, illustration and animation agent at Jelly London, where she reps a broad array of exceptionally talented illustrators, directors, working across advertising, packaging and editorial. So today I'm going to turn to Lou first of all, who's going to take the side of talent. Lou, over to you. How's it going? <laughs> Hope everyone can hear me. Thanks for joining us, guys, and thanks for having me. Um, so I guess, obviously, there's a little intro as to what I do at Jelly. Um, we have some amazing artists, and we also have a futures program. So our futures program looks at young talent coming into the industry, whether that's graduates or people who uh, maybe are coming in from a different direction. Maybe they've done graphic design before or that kind of thing. And we nurture them as well. Um, so talent is something that we're really, really looking at all the time. And before I worked uh, at, um, at Jelly, I worked managing the Association of Illustrators um, where I was giving business practice advice to illustrators around the world. Um, I also spoke on all the illustration courses, BA and MA courses, uh, about all the things that don't really hear about in uni like how to read your contracts and fight for your rights and negotiate with contra uh, clients and see yourself as a business so it was all about empowering your yourself with uh, that information to see yourself as a business so I mean from that and just my general own interest and absolute love for illustration and animation I have seen many a portfolio um, and I'm just constantly looking for new people and new work and I think talent Talent is the thing that makes you stand out, that initial thing, um, but then there's tenacity in terms of your whole business and the way that you actually, you know, I think the su how successful you are. Um, I've definitely seen an awful lot of talented illustrators um, and because they're not so great at the business side and they're not so great at those things, it has really affected their business. So I think there's a huge thing to be said for, for both sides. I think we're all born creative. And I think it takes uh, nurturing that creativity to actually turn it into talent. And I think uh, it's something that gives me a lot of joy is being able to kind of spot that and be like, right, if I am able to support you in this way, I know that we can get you from here to here. I guess talent is really like a set of skills. It's your skill set that you um, should be constantly evolving all the time and learning all the time to to improve your skills and improve your talent. Um, I think that's a great reason why going to uni and that kind of stuff can give you time to do, you know, if you do an MA or a BA, whatever, it gives you time to not just be a creative person who likes drawing, but to actually uh, figure out, okay, um, you know, you have the time to, to nurture that talent to become, um, you know, and find your own voice and stuff. I think um, when I'm looking out for talented illustrators, I'm usually doing it on, on Instagram and Twitter um, because both of those things are international. There's no boundaries there. So I can have access. Literally every illustrator in the entire world is at my fingertips. I just haven't discovered them yet. So um, that's a huge, huge, huge way for me to look. And that's obviously interesting for you guys to know. But when I am looking, what makes me stop mid scroll or whatever is definitely someone who has their own aesthetic niche. When, when I was looking at all, particularly all the uni students, um, you know, year after year, the graduates, 80 to 90% of the graduates, I could tell who their three main favorite illustrators or who their influences were by looking at their work. And that makes me a little bit sad sometimes. Um, and I think that's why I have a real passion for stuff that's not UK based and uh, illustrators who have um, come up from a different perspective because it, it just it comes through in their work they're not as influenced by the same stuff that everyone is here um, which can kind of dilute it I think making sure that you have your own aesthetic niche that you have your own voice that that's coming through across in every aspect of the way that you deliver your portfolio the way that you your Instagram looks the way that you contact people all of those things um, it's definitely 
a huge part of being talented. And I think um, the other thing I would be looking for in terms of, you know, so you've got your own aesthetic niche, your own voice, but that you're able to deliver a brief is a huge part because I think when you're coming out of uni, you've done a lot of stuff where um, you've had to explain everything 10,000 times over and, um, you know, the, you've been given projects that maybe actually aren't the kind of projects that you want to do for the rest of your life and actually all of these projects looks quite different and maybe there isn't a good sense of who you are from those projects but this is the time now to be making stuff that's just for you um, and that is really client focused um, you know it's not enough to just be able to draw um, obviously coming from a very illustration and animation background but um, to know that this is your job going forward to understand the commercial viability of your of of your of what your talent is, um, and be able to get the commercial viability of your talent across in the way that you present your portfolio and the way that you contact people and the way that you just present yourself, um, that you're not some begging poor artist and you're so grateful for the work and uh, you know that you're uh, that you understand um, that you are talented and that's a really really amazing um, and cherishable thing. I think. Uh, the main thing for me in having said all of that and the aesthetic niche thing is, is so big for me. I really have a very clear view of the kind of people where I see their work and I'm like, oh yeah. Hmm. Um, I think having spoken to all these students and stuff over the years and having witnessed lots of other illustrators who may not be the greatest illustrators in the world, but they're incredibly successful sometimes because they know the commercial viability more than anything else. So they're able to work commercially more than it, more than being like, wow, stunning illustration that is like blowing my mind or it's a totally new way of animating or something like that. Uh, but because they are really commercially talented, like commercially talented um, and know how to interact with clients in that way. And that in itself is a talent. Um, so there is loads of those kind of people. And I think you, I'm such a really big believer in the tenacity side of things in terms of understanding your worth and being confident and getting all the knowledge that you need in order to be confidence comes from knowledge. You can't just be, you know, otherwise you're just egotistical. And I think it's really important to see yourself as a business and be constantly, you know, throughout your whole career, absorbing information to give you more confidence and to build up that tenaciousness and build up that tenacity. So I think they're very interlinked. Thanks, Lou. Um, so there's loads that I, I want to pick up on there, but I think before I do, I'll, I'll hand over to Kevin and ask him to look at the same topic primarily I think through the lens of tenacity. Over to you. Thank you. Um, I think first of all I don't think we can let the moment pass without just applauding Lou's makeup. It's stunning. <laughs> <laughs> um, tenacity. So um, I agree with everything Lou just said and the way that I've moved through this industry is I've tried to use my tenacity to protect my talent, my passion, um, because I, I, I'm assuming, as we all know, um, working as a creative, it's, it's tiring, like you're pouring your life and soul into every little piece of work that you're trying to create and put out there, and more times than not, you're told no, 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 and that can be, um, that can be soul destroying, it's really, really upsetting. Um, so there has to be this balance for me, right? Where you build up a thick skin, but you, you don't build it up too thick that you forget your emotions and you forget the beauty and or lose yourself in all of that to the point where you forget the beauty that you're trying to put into your work in the first place. Um, just a little bit about me in terms of my background and it'll probably help make sense of um, my stance on this. Uh, initially, I was a photographer and I only ever shot on film or two for one cameras from Boots um, just because that's all I could afford. Um, I then got this idea in my head that I needed to go to uni um, to prove that I was a photographer. And by the, then, by this point, bearing in mind, I shot for most of the publications out at the time and I was doing bits and bobs all over the place. But I felt like that uni thing would uh, solidify 
um, my talent. Uh, stupid me. I went to uni, went in with my, um, I was self-taught, so went in with my portfolio. Um, they made me skip a whole year and put me straight through to the second year because they felt like I would be too bored trying to do the first year. Um, so I was like, right, I must, I'm meant to be here for sure. Uh, cut, skip forward to three, three months in and I had bounced already because actually I felt like what they were trying to do was strangle all of my talent out of me, trying to fit me into a box and I couldn't comprehend it because if what I presented to you in the first place um, allowed me to skip a whole year, why are you now then trying to uh, effectively um, wring it out of me? Um, so after that, I left. Um, I continued doing photography. Uh, that turned into directing. Just those two things kind of go in hand if you're in love with image in that way. Um, and then I realized I had become a token within the industry, um, like the cool gay black kid to have in a room, um, whether that was just to look kind of edgy, whatever that means, or to just be tokenistic to the point of like, look, we're not problematic. We've got a gay black guy here. Um, I am a Virgo from South London. So what that means is I do not like to be comfortable and I'm always striving for the best. So I could have been in that particular situation and just been like, this is great. I'm constantly being booked and all the rest of it. But um, I felt like that was a disservice to my culture that I hold very dearly. And I didn't want to be a part of that. So I had a long thought about it and decided like, rah, I guess if I get into advertising, at least I'm in the room creating these ideas that we're executing effectively. Um, but didn't have a degree or any of those things. So went around and had loads of meetings with different agencies um, who all didn't get me. They, they didn't understand. And at this point, again, I have the talent, right? Apparently, because I've skipped a whole year. I've done all of these things. I've shot for ID, they, all of them. I've done all of these things and nobody, nobody's understanding when I'm asking them about the culture within their businesses. Um, Along the way of doing all of this, uh, I've always kind of gone to, I guess, the university of YouTube. So for any skill set that I needed, I'm like, cool, there's a tutorial online for that and just sat there and learned. So in terms of editing, coloring, all of these things, I've just taught myself, uh, put it out there to be critiqued and got better and kept going and kept going and kept going. Um, eventually, I ended up at an agency. Uh, I met a lady. Um, who needed an in-house editor. Um, I specifically said, like, listen, I want to be in creative. And she was completely down. She was like, I've got this position to fill. Um, but if you come in, like, I, I will support you and back you and try to help you. So uh, I did that. I went and, and uh, dropped my day wage down to, like, absolutely nothing. Uh, literally had to live off of my savings. And um worked my ass off and while in that first year i literally would just walk into rooms that i wasn't meant to be in uh meetings and pitches that i had no business being a part of and be like i've got ideas and just like uh took the piss I just, what do you want me to do or like i have no kind of choice but through all out through out that whole time as well i was still making my own stuff and making stuff for me because I realized very quickly I dived into this world that is about profit and is about um, just delivering whatever the client wants to a certain extent um, and those days are very long and they can be very cold and I realized very quickly that if I just stay there in that dark side by the time I come out on the other half it felt a little bit like my experience at uni which I just walked away from. I felt like if I stayed in this industry and didn't continue to make the things that I want to make and all the rest of it, then I would be lost. Um, so for me, uh, making my own stuff during that time um, was imperative to like, not only like my survival in the industry, but to be honest, my mental health and tenacity got me through that. Tenacity is what made me walk into the room and be like, oh, I'm just here to observe. Oh, I have an idea. Tenacity is what made me get back up over and over and over again. Um, 
in that particular agency as well, I went through some absolutely uh, terrible times, which I won't get into, um, but it was quite traumatic. And again, tenacity was the thing that I've got a goal. This is what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to do it. And it, I, I just, I, I think it's all down to tenacity, but using that tenacity to protect um, your talent and your passion. So although this is meant to be a debate, I think uh, that it might have to change slightly because I think for me personally, those two things go in hand and I 100% agree with what Lou's saying as well. Thank you both so much. And yeah, certainly one can't, can't live without the other, um, but it's, it's almost understanding which one, I guess, is the bigger driver for us, which is always, always interesting. So two things I really want to pick up on. The, the first to both of you, if I'll start with, with Lou. Personality seems to be a key element to what you were both saying. It certainly seems to have driven both of your careers and it's something that you both look for, uh, potentially in others, if you're looking to recruit. How can you almost stand out, demonstrate personality I think this is a really interesting thing. It's a conversation that we've been having a lot recently where um, we're kind of aware that illustrators are, they don't fully understand the advertising side of things. They don't fully understand their art directors. They don't fully understand that process. And therefore it creates a kind of us and them, you know, like I'm not getting any work. And it's this, this kind of thing. And I think um, exposing yourself to as much of that and really starting to understand like the way that agencies work and the way that design studios work and that kind of stuff definitely is just a stepping stone for you to just be a bit more comfortable in that space rather than just being like peddling your wares and hoping that you get around it. I think um, it's another thing to remember that the people that you're dealing with are humans and we're, and you're a human as much as you want to be respected. You also um, have to stand out and be, res be respectful too. And I think, um i think being funny i think being personable and like actually you know that tenacity can that's where that comes out where you're kind of um you've got to make people remember you for the right reasons obviously your work should be amazing but you've got to re make them remember that you're a human that they want to work with rather than just a, a fucking service provider or whatever a pen for hire nobody wants to be that and i think um you know really reminding people like you know what Kevin was saying about getting in the room and being like yeah we, like I'm not just here to to do whatever you want like we're here to work together we're actually part of the same industry you know and we both facilitate the same thing and we both deserve an, the same kind of respect um, and I think getting used to those kind of situations I think presenting your portfolio in different ways um, and really understanding your own branding is a really great way when you see yourself as a business and understand that wherever you have your work, whether it's printed material or whether it's your Instagram or whether it's your website, that's all branding. That's all your own brand. I know artists hate that word, but I think being able to really understand that and use that so clients can see the kind of thing that you want to do in your portfolio. They can see the kind of person that you are through your portfolio, through your Instagram, it's fantastic. Also the things that you're interested in because nowadays people are actually buying into who you are as an illustrator as well. There's, you know, there's that whole element that where brands want whoever they're working to, re to reflect the market that they are going for as well. So if you kind of can get those things across in your portfolio um, and in the way you, when you go and meet people that you actually have done your research, that you know what you're talking about and be able to pull up, whatever it is and, and make yourself relevant in that moment, I think is a really, really big thing. But I think also just, you know, trying to be fun and like actually enjoy, you know, not, not to see these people as, as scary people, even though they are usually quite egotistical and a little bit scary. Um, <laughs> but, you know, and that's, you know, that's a difficult thing in itself just to get over when, you know, a lot of creative people are quite introverted. But I think between the two, between the way that you present your portfolio or the way that you present yourself online, um you know that's a that's a huge way uh to get that across for sure well thank you kevin anything to add to that so for me and my creative partner um who i met in that very first job within the first week um we became quick best friends every single um 
agency that we've ever been in for interviews we're very much like we make diverse work and when we talk about diversity we're talking about uh, gender we're talking about sexuality we're talking about different body types um, all across the board we are not into this uh, this is how our work is presented we're just very very clear from the beginning so there is no confusion and that way if you don't want to hire us based on that then great because we don't need to be working there and you don't need us working there uh, but I have a big bugbear about this thing uh, around culture as well where it's like um, there is no doubt that black Twitter has a lot of source that black Instagram and all of these other places that not only black spaces, brown and ethnic minorities or anyone that's marginalized, we all understand how culture works, right? The most marginalized people do what they can with the, the, the least and make magic. And then the mainstream comes along and it's like, oh, that looks cool. And here we go. And then you have things like, I don't know, Miley, Miley Cyrus twerking or um, pick a, um, what's her name, Katie, um, Perry video, pick any one of them. Um, and I think you just need to kind of, you have that in mind and, and you understand that you, you are part of that kind of magic. And sometimes it's heartbreaking, but again, it's that tenacity, that thing that we were talking about. It's like you go in and you put your best foot forward um, and you, you kind of use that force to almost like protect you and infuse your culture as much as you can try to uh, remind people that when you are bringing your culture to the table it sh they shouldn't be able to nitpick and be like well i like this bit and not that bit a hundred percent of you should be allowed to walk through the door and actually if it's not is that a place that you want to be working in in the first place so yeah that's my fault i don't even know if i answered the point but that's yeah um so the other area that i think of around tenacity that I kind of I guess is intertwined with some of the stuff you've said is about resilience and those two words how they, they play into each other I think it's really interesting at the minute and you know we've got a whole wave of grads that are going to be going into a, a difficult job market to say the least and at the best of times our industry is good at saying no and not always so good at saying yes so any little tips and, and tricks just to keep your energy levels up during those periods to, to sort of get off, off the ground and keep keep going keep striving keep making would be would be grateful i'll try uh kevin first this time uh i think keep um make your own briefs um make your own briefs make your own your own work um and also there there is this thing with when i talk to young people where they run off and they're trying to get um me on their projects which i'm always open to like i will help anyone that needs help do you know what i mean like completely but also um there are people in your network right now who like a hundred times better than me <laughs> like a thousand percent a hundred times better than me like link with those people and start to build your own networks you have all the talent around you like you have actually all of the power and so for me even now like there are bigger things that i would love to do with certain brands and stuff just because like of a tick box and that's completely fine as well but um i can't but then actually i look around and i'm like actually like look at all of these amazing people around me we can just kind of and um, do this to together and i think um another thing that i do some people need to do it daily um i feel like i do it weekly at the moment which I think is a testament to my growth, but is to check in on your ego and check when you have to kill it. Like, like you should be checking to you should be checking on your ego and where it's at almost daily, weekly, and be like, oh, you got a bit too big for your boots. Kill it. Like, just cut cut that shit right down and just be like, right, just simplify the situation. Kill your ego. Kill it. It's always going to come back as well, unfortunately. Um, but yeah. Thank you, Lou. I think it like literally straight off the bat, even when uh, Kevin was talking about resilience, his own resilience and like to work in ad agencies and stuff, you know, I have friends that have worked in ad agencies this year and haven't had a single thing go through. And that is, and they're just ideas people. Every single day they're coming out with shit and they're getting told no, and it never happens or things don't get through to delivery, but they do start and then all of these things. And obviously everyone found that with 
COVID and, and you know, all the jobs kind of getting stopped. And I'm sure some of, you know, some of the students and stuff may have had things like that get dropped on them as well. And I think that resilience is just, it is the name of the game, unfortunately. Like it is part, is part and parcel of, of, of um, you know, going forward. But um, I think one way, and it's something that I was doing a lot of uh, at the beginning is to do your own personal work. I think for illustrators in particular, if I kind of hound them out, um, and animators and, and, you know, people who are got that kind of creative side. I think it's important at this moment while, you know, you can, you could do a passion project that is absolutely nothing and may not bring you any work. Um, I think it is always good to have an idea of, you know, the kind of dream projects that you'd like to do and filter that into some of your personal projects so that they're not just wild beautiful drawings that have got nothing to do with anything or beautiful projects that are you know i think when you have time and money and you're financially stable i think that's the time when you take some time off and you go and you create something fucking amazing that's got nothing to do with anything and it probably will bring you in work i've put the cat out i had to close <laughs> the door um and it's just i can hear him now um so i think that's a really big thing to think about and i think it's a great time now i also would say you know, I'm because I do all the new business here. Like the 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 things are beginning to roll back into action, and over the next couple of weeks and couple of months, as you know, businesses start. There's also an onus on businesses right now to show what they've been doing in the meantime and how much they've grown and how much they're connecting and all that kind of stuff. So it is a really really great time um, to do some personal work. That's kind of you know, aimed at the right kind of clients or the right kind of projects that you'd like to be doing, get that in your portfolio so they can see that and be like, hey, I've just done this new project. What do you think? You know, and use this time to be researching and getting out there and getting in contact with people for sure. Right. I'm glad to hear that it's coming back. It's good. Can I just add something onto that quickly? Sorry, before we move on. That's yeah, um, I just think, yeah. 100% again, uh, Lou. Um, I think it's like, for all the interviews that me and my creative partner have had, it isn't the big like O2 campaigns that have got me the job or the photo, whatever. It's the stuff that we just did in our own time and the stuff that we, this cat is just really performing right now. Anyway, um, it's the stuff that uh, we did in our own time, like the really, really small stuff. Like our first agency, we worked on um, a charity and no one else in the agency wanted to work on it because it was a pro bono project. And like me and my creative partner were like, but it's a really good charity. We couldn't comprehend why no one wanted to work on it, but we did. Um, and we did all of this amazing stuff and we had all the freedom in the world because we just had to think of it on a low budget. Uh, but the point is, the next job that we had when we got all of these things like a Christmas this and that, 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 uh, they were like, oh yeah, cool, you can handle budgets, but what's this? And then we talked them through it. And I think because it just showed off our what we were personally about, because we'd come in and said all these magical things about what we were about, well, there's the work to prove it. But also, um, just like it showed our thinking in a really personal, honest way with no one looking, and I think that that has always been the thing. The next job, it was another thing that we did in the time, another charity gig. Like all that other stuff is great, but people are more so buying into uh, how you think and how you move in the world and what your morals are. Yeah, it comes back to that first theme, the personality as well, doesn't it? it enables you to really shine. Yeah. I'm now going to hand over to uh, our audience. Um, so please let get the questions coming in. We've still got about 10 minutes, so we'll try and rattle through as many of these as we can. So we've got one here from Hazel. Is an Instagram profile's uh, followers count important, or is it, is it the Instagram uh, professionalism that you're looking for, or the aesthetic? I guess that's one direct to you there, Lou. Um, I think it's really, really important, like I was saying about having your brand, I think your follower count, I personally don't think it matters because I find people all around the world that have a really low follower count, but their work's amazing. And I'm like, sweet, nobody knows about them. Great. Um, but I think, unfortunately, nowadays we are seeing clients where you're Instagram following and, and 
that kind of thing does matter to them sometimes. Um, there's nothing you can do about that, you know, and I think getting hung up on numbers and that kind of shit is only going to be bad for your mental health. The main thing that you need to think about when it comes to your Instagram is that it's your, your business account and it's a business tool. It's a new business tool and it should be a way, it's, it's much more of a calling card than your website because it's much more up to date. So that's where all the art directors are looking because it shows a little bit of who you are. I think aesthetically it has to, you should see it as one whole unit. When I'm looking at someone's Instagram, I wanna see their whole voice, their whole aesthetic niche. I wanna see a color palette through it. I want it to look expensive and I want it to look where I can really see their whole voice. It's not just about the one thing, it's about the whole thing. They'll just go to your account and do a couple of swipes like this. Yes, they can do the thing. Yes, they look good, bam. They're not spending hours and hours and hours trolling through loads of your things individually or anything like that. So you definitely see, need to see it as one whole unit, as one whole bit of branding for yourself. Right. Yeah, um, uh, yeah, I would agree. I think, um, I do think, yeah, clients do are like, well, how many followers? And to be honest, I, um, particularly if I'm presenting directors, so we'd get a creative, just for those who might not know, but we'd get a brief, we'd write whatever we've written, we need to find a director, we uh, then present directors to our client, right? But what we, me and my partner particularly do is take production um, companies off name and genders and just ask clients to look at the work, mm. um, just because I just want you to judge the work, I'm not interested in... Um, All the rest of it yeah like it's about the talent of the work i'm not everybody does that but that's just the way i function again like but for me you're right i i do look through and i'm just like do i get it i don't want to have to scroll through six or seven images of your cat cute or not to get to your illustration your photography whatever like just make it consistent and i'm not saying that you shouldn't have your cats and your family and all the rest in it i'm sure but like start to look at it as a business calling card so every single third image on your grid maybe could be a piece of work just make sure it is um but yeah i personally don't look for numbers because i i think that's ridiculous because even if you take it down to the basic level of if you were being robbed and the homeless guy stopped you from being robbed that wasn't the guy who had the six million pound house across the road it's not about numbers and status it's about your intention and your talent and all of these things i hope that made sense that analogy probably a little shit but i think we uh, <laughs> no, no, <laughs> made sense um okay we're gonna we've got loads coming in uh one from rafter i hope i've pronounced that right uh kevin you mentioned uh the importance of networking your circle how do you even start doing it um what are your tips for those of us that um don't know how to network and haven't connected to people in the industry before um I think that after this talk is done, I'd imagine, I think it's been posted on the DNAD Instagram, right? I would then be going to that Instagram and looking for everybody else that was part of this conversation, watching it, following people, finding out what they thought. I think if there's people that you want to connect to and you don't have a personal um, connection with, I'm not trying to say that you should be that guy from that program, you on Netflix, but I think that you can go to like Instagram and find like a mutual friend to introduce you. Um, there are low, I, like there are people around you right now. Like I truly believe in six degrees of separation. And so you need to start saying out loud what it is that you're looking for, who it is that you're looking to connect to. Like that stuff cannot just stay in your brain and magically like it appears and all the rest of it to manifest that stuff you need to start you don't know who knows who so in the same realm where it's like uh you kind of have to be professional because the industry isn't that um that the industry isn't that um that big or is it small i've forgotten how you say that the industry isn't that the world's not that big okay with that yeah yeah you know what i mean it's not that big it's the same thing like say out loud like what you're looking for because there's always uh someone that's like do you know what i know a guy who knows a guy and like even if it's a guy who knows a guy who knows a guy that length to get to that information is much shorter than just not getting to the information so like yeah yeah i think that is massively powerful as soon as you get that out in the open it's amazing how many people you know it's, it's phenomenal i'm going to move on to a different question so we can get through some more and this one for you lou um and a few people have sort of touched on this 
any advice for people with low confidence in an industry where it seems to demand it? Another one here from Megan. Um, how do you deal with imposter syndrome, doubting your own talent? I think there's, there's a huge amount of conversation in this. And I think uh, around this right now on Twitter and stuff and has been for a long time, uh, particularly for illustrators. Um, and I guess it comes from um, you love what you do and it's, uh, you, it's hard to feel anything but grateful when someone likes what you do and you love it. Um, I think it's really, really important to uh, be really proactive. I think the more that you create space for anxiety to build, the more it will build. And I think making sure that you actually like have, have a business plan. You can't see yourself as a business unless you actually treat yourself like a business. So if you're just sitting and waiting for jobs to come by and be like, oh my God, the industry is so shit. That's because you haven't seen yourself as a business at all. Do you know, are you educating yourself on how to read contracts? Do you know how to price your work? There are places like the AOI, like the Association of Illustrators, and lots of other places, Lecture and Progress, um, uh, House of Illustration, all of these places are there to support you. There's loads of resources, but particularly the AOI in terms of how to run your business. There's business strategy courses um, and that kind of thing where you actually get that stuff. You will never feel confident in yourself unless you start to actually get that education, get that information into you. Because like you, ha you have that talent, you have the skill set, but it's so, it's such that side of it in terms of illustration and, that's, and, and animation and those things, uh, it's really maybe 50% of the job and the rest is actually seeing yourself as a business and understanding that. And a, you know, being confident, you can be introverted and be good at business. You know, you can absolutely, I know lots of people who are, and the reason that they're like that is because they've gotten the information that they needed. So at least they know, at least they know that over email, they can negotiate the shit out of this deal. You know, they understand that contract. They understand the bits of the contract that are wrong and that are like a warning sign and they know where to go with it. They know how to compromise. And it's because they've educated themselves to do that and found the resources like the ones that are on the AOI and that out there. So I think it's really easy to be negative. It's really easy to give in to anxiety and it's really easy to create space for anxiety. As creative people, it's there. It's absolutely, it's a huge problem for all of us. Um, little small attainable goals for yourself, like teaching yourself those things, getting that information and really, really understanding it. And for uh, getting a new support system. There's so many great events and that you can go to uh, like Pictoplasma and LCAF and loads of these things, you know, and like DNAD, uh, where you can meet people and be surrounded by other people in your, in your, uh, your peers and that as well to, to make those connections is always a good one. Fantastic. I'm going to move on to another question. This time for you, Kevin. Uh, this is from Kate. How do you remain authentic in a trend-based industry? Oh, well, question. Isn't that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, how do you remain authentic in a trend-based um, trend industry? Again, it's that, it's that tenacity. Um, you take on a project and you really have to just give over to the fact that by this, probably by the time that you finished that project, the thing that you were touting as the, ne touting as the next big thing is now boring and you're on to the next. Um, you have to, I don't want to get too philosophical, but you have to, what's that Bruce Lee thing, like be like the water and just flow with it all and like, okay, I'm working on this now. Oh, that whole thing disappeared. Um, I cannot tell you, I think we touched on it, um, touched on it before, I cannot tell you how many um, projects that were almost like just about to go into production then disappeared because budget disappeared or this, that, or got told no, or they pulled the talent, or actually we're not going to do it this way, we want to do it that way. Uh, it's rejection after rejection after rejection. So with that being said, you've just kind of got to open yourself up and just go with the flow. And the moment that you do that, you're no longer resisting the change of things. So therefore, if the thing that you made in that moment was beautiful and on point, great. But tomorrow, it will be yesterday's news to a certain extent. And it is what it is. And you just have to let that go. You cannot, in, in my opinion, in my humble opin opinion, you cannot be a creative and hold on to like, these things it's almost like trying to hold water it's almost like trying to hold like sand like it will just rush out of your hands you just have to be open and it is uh, what it is the only things that you in my opinion again should be staunch on 
is um, within the creative industry is be against sexism, be against racism, be against all of those phobias and isms that we have no time for and will not back down on. But in terms of creativity, just let it go where it is and it ends when it ends and it starts when it starts. You don't really have a control. The secret is, is like, you guys are all working to be like senior in all of these spaces thinking you'll get there and everything will be figured out and you have all the answers. Like, I'm just going to let you know now as a CD, uh, at Havas Media, like absolutely no one knows what they're doing. It's that thing of like when you leave school and you think, oh, we're in college now. And then you get to college and you're like, rah, like we're just a bit older. We're, we're still children. We're just a bit older and we still don't know what we're doing. Like everyone is just trying to do the best that they can do, basically. Just let it go. Oh, big up frozen. Let it go and just go with the, with <laughs> the flow. <laughs> and I loved it if you'd have broken into song. But, um, <laughs> No, how reassuring is that as well? I think that's something to hold on to, that it doesn't matter where you are in the, in the industry, you still have those insecurities and sure where things are going. Anything to add on that, Lou? No, I fully, fully agree. I think, you know, like, like I was saying, you're, if you're a creative person, the darkness, she's always there. She's lovely. She's always hanging out. Oh, she's so lovely to go back into. Um, and I just think it's a constant, it's a constant thing that you need to uh, keep tabs on. And it evolves as you get older and as you get further into your career. Um, and I think it's, it's really not allowing yourself to have that space. Um, and then, you know, I think as well, because that space is what you were talking about. You can't let it go. You can't let it go at all when you're like, you're preempting all the things that can and can't happen or will and won't happen. And that will be a detriment to you going forward. It really prevents you from not being able to see, see things clearly. Mm. And uh, feel free or in yourself. Okay, I'm conscious we are already over time, but there's two quick questions that we can probably get through if that's okay with you both. Yep. Um, maybe if you each take one. Uh, so the first is from Dylan. How do you feel about pitching for free? Perhaps a very quick one. Either one of you jump in. I mean, look, if you're financially stable um, and that you want to do work for free, work for free, working for free and working pro bono is so different. They are two very, very different things. If you're financially stable enough that you can do some pro bono work, pro bono means for the people, right? So it's for the good and it's for the good of yourself. That's fine. Then, you know, more power to you. If it's something amazing that's going to be great in your portfolio or it's just the kind of project that you'd love to get paid for in the, in the, you know, in the future, then do it. Um, if you're a student, absolutely fucking not. Real. Well, thank you so much both of you